Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a fly I call the unsinkable. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise then is a Hanak H130 barbless hook. This one's at size 16. It's a dry fly hook on a fine wire and in black nickel. Now this may be a bit folly. Usually when I'm doing demonstrations I I tend to use much bigger hooks, uh, it's just easier to demonstrate and makes it easier for you guys but I've had a lot of people asking me to tie this fly as I would tie it. So I do tie it down to about a size 14 up to an 18, uh, so I thought I'd do it in the middle at the size 16. So it might be a bit folly, it could get messy but uh, we're going to give it a go. So I'm going to be using Vivas today, uh, this is the GSP, it's at 30 denier. And as you can see, it's a clear thread. Now, always with the GSP, I like to get a little spot of super glue onto the shank of the hook. And all this does is make sure I don't get any body rotation in my fly. And that's quite important for this pattern. It does have a tendency, uh, if you haven't tied it properly, to burrow around the shank of the hook. So the super glue just prevents that. Now, I'm putting a bed of silk down all the way back to just beyond the point and I'm going to come in with my snips and remove my waist. Now the body of this fly then is made up from snowshoe. Now snowshoe is a fantastic um, material and it just keeps on giving so you use this bit for wings and posts but once you've done that you can get in about this section here and it makes an excellent body for uh, dry fly. So I'm just going to come in and dub a little bit of this on. It doesn't take much. As you can imagine for a size 16 hook there's not a whole lot of shank to dress. So I'm just going to ease it on gently. Don't want to have too much. And my body's not that long either so I'm just going to park my thread. And what I've done is I've left myself plenty of room towards the eye of the hook because that's where the magic's going to happen, if you like. Next, I'm going to use some wax on my silk, uh, because I'm going to start to tie in the winging materials in there. There's quite a lot of winging for a size 16 hook, so what I'm using is, I'll just grab the packet, is some elk body hair, this is bull, it's come all the way from Canada, courtesy of Kerry Pitt, much appreciated. And uh, as you can see here, it's a lovely patch and, and the better quality your elk hair is, the nicer the fly is going to turn out. Now initially, I'm just going to take some fibres, maybe half a dozen or so, from the pelt. And I'm going to align them up as best I can, just with my fingers. I'll take the, the long runners doesn't have to be very accurate because this is going to be hidden quite a lot by my secondary wing. Just one there and that will take out and bring that down. Okay, so what I want with this initially is about the length of the hook shank. I'll lay that on, pop it down on top, excuse my fingers, Get two or three wraps in, lift it back, two or three wraps in front and then you can come in with your snips and remove that waste. And I'm just going to ease that over slightly, not quite happy with how it sat there, uh, that will do the job. Okay next, what I'm using is some of this stuff, uh, I don't have the packet because I've been tying quite a lot of these. Uh, they're, they're great for standalone dry fly and they can support a small nymph if you wanted to fish dual. Now this is a uh, ultra dry yarn, it's from Fish On in brown and what I do with this, it comes on quite thick and to get the best use out of it I like to brush out the yarn. Now I don't need all this so I'm going to look for a round 
half a centimetre and then again I'll come in and take that off now I've still got plenty of wax on my thread I can see that I don't want to waste too much of this I'm starting to run low on all the stuff for this fly because I have been tying quite a bit of them and catch that in ok that's a little bit long so what I can do is just come in with my scissors I don't want to take it all in a one -er. just want to tidy it up a little you don't want a completely straight cut that will do the job there we go so far so good next then what I'm going to do is get my elk hair which uh, I used initially for the underwing there and I'm going to take some of that off and it's about a centimetre if you were to, to measure where I'm cutting at the base here and then what you do with the elk hair is once you've taken it from the patch you can simply brush out all the under fur now if you don't do this part it won't stack properly in your hair stacker so this is very important part of the process next I'm going to put it in my hair stacker and give it a good bang on the vise or the table whatever you uh, see fit and then once it's stacked you can take it out just grab the, the ends now before you do anything else measure up to the fly and as you can see you're not you're only using the very tips and then get it over to your waste basket and snip that away uh, I do advise you use a waste basket to keep your significant other off your case then excuse my fingers you can't see much at the minute catch that in quite gentle at first and then once you've got a couple of turns you can start coming through your cut ends and tidying that all up I like to just make sure all the, not all the ends but as much as possible I've captured all them cut ends in and that's looking not too bad I can see a stray fibre on your side I'm not going to lose any sleep over it uh, I'm going to add a little bit more wax to my silk and then the sighter that I use is uh, Aero Wing and I've got some here and I've got the very last of my Aero Wing so what I'm going to do is I like my post to come halfway up my wing and then I'm going to capture that in with a couple of turns then I can bring that back out the way and get a couple of turns in front and then it's just a case of coming in with your snips and removing the waste now the idea of the post of course is if you're an older older guy or your eyesight's not as good when you cast a dry fly you want to locate it very quickly because very often fish will come and take the dry fly one or two seconds after it's hit the water and if you've not located your fly then you'll often miss the take so it's important that you can see your fly from that perspective and also uh, because of the buoyancy properties of this particular fly I do like to use it as an indicator when I'm fishing very small nymphs and I mean size 18, size 20 nymphs because it won't hold up much, much more than that but uh, what you've got is two takeable flies uh, and I discussed that in another video I did about duo fishing and I'll stick that up in the, the information bar there okay 
Next step, I'm going to take a little bit more of my snowshoe, just a tiny bit, you don't need loads. Okay, next then, I'm going to split my thread using a needle to create a dubbing loop. Bear with me as my eyes get steadily worse. And then I can insert my small amount of snowshoe into that. I'm just going to move it up and get my thread wrapped up a bit onto the bobbin. And then spin that up, that will hold all the, the fibres into place. Now you may want to just thin that out a little. Doesn't need to be overly bushy. And then bring it round. Come over your post. Pull the ring back so you've got a little bit of room at the front. And before I come in with my whip finish tool, I'm going to add the smallest amount of super glue just to my silk. Then grab the whip finisher, bring back out the way, and get a nice head in there. And then again. Come in with your snips and remove that. And because I've added the uh, the super glue, there's no need to come in with varnish or anything like that. Now I'm not done yet. Before uh, any of my dry flies of this style see my fly box, I use some of this stuff, and uh, the label's melted off. But basically, it's silicon muslin, and it comes on a little brush applicator. And what you can do is just get your brush in about all the different fibres that you've tied in and this will ensure that when you arrive at the river bank you're not wasting your time applying floating treatments and stuff so once uh, I tie this on it's good to go now once it's taken a few fish and I guarantee it will take a few fish for you there we go thanks very much for watching if you're getting value from the videos please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all next time